Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Local23. You're joining me for Choices, the stories you play. Hero, Ch Book 1, Chapter 5, Heatwave. On the night of your victory over Shrapnel, Kalo drives a getaway van to the streets of Northridge, trying to shake the cops. You don't get it, new guy. Load the van, new guy. I'll show them. I'll show them all. This life ain't about money or diamonds. Hell, it ain't even about violence. It's about chaos. About bringing the corrupt goddamn system to its knees. And I know just how to do that. All I need is a little more power. Caleb reaches into his jacket and pulls out the prism crystal. It's pink glow, casting an otherworldly light on his wicked grin. I'm glad I grabbed you when I did. You're worth more than all these other rocks combined. He squeezes the crystal in his fist and it starts to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. Yes, that's it. Give me your power! While driving, no less. Yeah! It's time for the city to burn! Caleb checks his rearview mirror just as the cops close in on him and a wicked grin spreads across his face. And I just know where to start! Hmm. Next day, you and Dax are out getting coffee with some of your co-workers. Man, I needed this. I feel like I haven't had a good night's sleep since the gala. I've been working so much overtime, it's like I've got a second job. You're telling me. We actually included her in a coffee break? What could you possibly mean by that, Alex? From where I'm standing, you've been less productive than ever. Uh, I guess I just feel busier, somehow. Also, if you're just gonna insult me all day, don't be surprised if I don't invite you to get coffee with us again. Invite me? I'm here because it's free macchiato day. You all just happen to show up. Uh, could we maybe try to have one civil conversation before our breakup, please? Hmm, fine. Let's have a civil conversation. You go first. Um, what's it like being engaged? Seen the good movies lately. Yes, actually. My fiancé and I caught a screening of Arachne the other night. Huh. I don't think I've heard of it. It's an art film. The director filmed a spider web for an entire year and got Philip Glass to do the score. Oh. That sounds really, uh, interesting. See? It wasn't so odd, was it? I suppose not. Just then, the news anchor on the coffee shop's TV announces a new segment on superhumans. This just in, are superhumans a threat to our city's safety? District Attorney Miko Katsaros says absolutely. We have to join our reporter in the field live from City Hall. Catherine, what's all the hullabaloo about? Well, Steve, I'm outside of City Hall where District Attorney Miko Katsaros has condemned the actions of the vigilantes like Talos, the Man of Bronze. And I believe that's her leaving you. Come on, Roger. Move that camera, damn it! Reporter hurries to catch up with Miko Katsaros just as she's getting into a car. Miss Katsaros, got anything to say to the viewers at home? Yes. As a matter of fact, I do. I know the recent crime sprees have made some of you feel like police officers aren't doing enough to protect you. And I'll admit that we could be doing better, much better, which is why I'm instituting a new campaign aimed at preventing and disrupting criminal activities throughout our city. As for these masked vigilantes menacing our streets, I'd advise them to leave this to the professionals. Or what, you're going to arrest us? Even though they may be the only ones with the power necessary to stop these reported supervillains? Look, I don't care if you're made of bronze, steel, or everyday flesh and blood. No civilian is authorized to take the law into their own hands. In fact, anyone who disregards this fundamental law of our society will be rightly considered a criminal, too. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, your world must suck. 
In our world, if you're an everyday citizen, you're allowed to make a citizen's arrest and do what you need to do to protect the innocent. If only vigilantes really existed in our world, huh? So, you really think your officers can handle these superhumans? What about the cops who were attacked last night by the so-called man on fire? This interview is over. Hmm. Reporter cuts away, just as Miko slams the door. Uh, wow. That was a lot to take in. Man on fire? Just how many super villains are in the city? Who knows? But with maniacs like that running around, I'm glad someone liked Talos to protect us. No way! He's a vigilante! Miko Katsaris is right. He's just a much threat to the city as these so-called supervillains. I think we need heroes now more than ever. We should trust the cops to handle this. Tell us is overrated. Hmm. So as a person who lives in a capital city that's crime-ridden, both with shootings every day, um, horrible driving, very rude people, robberies left and right, all the shit. I really wish there was more vigilantes. I honestly wish I was a vigilante. But <laughs> I don't have the equipment, uh, nor the money for such a adventure, so we need heroes more than now. Now than ever, excuse me. Who else but a superhero can stand up to a supervillain? That's the kind of thinking that'll make the city more vulnerable than ever. Not really. You're still having the police employed. You're just... Employing someone who can take on people that normal people like you can, and it's to protect you. When our cops and civilians start thinking of themselves as fundamentally inferior to supers, we'll know we've truly lost. Thankfully, it looks like that won't be happening anytime soon. With Miss Katsaros' new initiative, Northbridge will finally be a safe place to live. Mark my words! I'll admit, Miko Katsaros is certainly an impressive figurehead for the NPD. I just hope our officers are up to the task at hand. Speaking of which, it's high time we all got back to our own tasks. There's still plenty to do. Hmm. As the four of you walk back toward Prescott Industries, you and Dax trail behind. Had you heard about this? This man on fire? Immediately? No, but we shouldn't really be surprised, should we? After Shrapnel and Talos, it seems pretty clear that there will be a lot more superhumans cropping up at Northbridge. If only there was some way we could learn about more about them, and exactly what happened at the Prism Gate exploded, we might learn why this is happening. For that, we need to get our hands on a Prism Crystal, but it's either with the cops or somewhere else. I know which I'd prefer. Yeah, me too. Anyway, wanna come by the lab? Maybe we can finally power up that laser now that Poppy's not here. Uh, no thanks. As tempting as that sounds, I know I told Grayson I'd go back to Bayside with him today. Oh! Did he buy that busted up cabaret you were telling me about? He did, indeed. And it sounds like he's found a manager for it, too. Probably you. Oh, damn it, my headset's getting low. Hold on. Let me plug this in. There we go. A short while later, Grayson pulls up outside the Grand and kills the engine. The two of you step out into the sidewalk, and Grayson takes some keys from his pocket. Ready to see inside? Definitely. Here goes nothing! He looks just like Talos. Grayson turns the key in the lock and pulls the double doors wide, releasing a cloud of dust. <coughs> Guess no one's cleaned the place in a while. I'd say cleaning's the least of your concerns. This place is gonna need a lot of work to get back to its former glory. Kenji. Hmm. Hold on. Just a moment. Maybe he could be Talos. Maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know. It's tough. He, he's he got the frame and the face for it. I'm just trying to visualize it. 
Is Forma Glory? Why stop there? This place could be so much more than that. Assuming you hire me to manage it, of course. You turn around to see a young man leaning against the cabaret's door frame, a wry smile on his face. Alex, meet Kenji Katsoros. Kenji, this is Executive Assistant Alex. Hey! You look familiar. Have... Were you at the gala? Have I seen you on TV or something? Nope, just one of those faces, I guess. Although you've probably seen my mom on TV, especially recently. Kenji's mother is Miko Katsoros, Northbridge's district attorney. She's been all over the news. Right, that must be it. Yeah. The game just kind of gave it away. Kenji slowly walks around the old cabaret, his brows knitted in concentration. So, this is the grand, huh? I thought it'd be, I don't know, grander. The place just needs a little DLC to get it back on its feet. After that, it's up to you to build up its reputation. Think you're up to the job? Kenji chuckles and cocks an eyebrow at Gason. Grayson. Gason, wow. Oh, I'm up for it, believe me. Just give me a little time, and this'll be the most hotly anticipated nightclub opening in North Bridge history. We just need to discuss my rate. For that, I leave you in Alex's capable hands. Huh? Kenji, would you give us a moment? Grayson pulls you aside, just out of Kenji's earshot. I'd like you to take point on this negotiation, Alex. You just need to discuss Kenji's rate as a club manager. I'm committed to hiring him, but if you can convince him to take a lower salary, I'd be grateful. Okay, don't worry, I got this. I know you do. I'll see you later, Alex. I need to get back to the office anyway. As Grayson heads out, Kenji turns to you, grinning. Well, shall we? Sure. Uh, let's talk. I'll be honest, we have other candidates in mind. We're gonna hire you, no question. I'm gonna be honest, we have other candidates in mind. And to be frank, a lot of them have more experience. You're comparatively younger. So, it's like that. Alright, I'll play ball. Being comparatively younger just means I know your demographic better. But if you want some old dude managing your club, be my guest. Now, why exactly should I want to work for the Grand? Because you can make this place whatever you want it to be. We can pay you more than anyone. You'll get to see me again. Hmm. You can make this place whatever you want it to be. Right now, the Grand is a blank canvas, waiting for its artist. It's a success or a failure. will be yours, and yours alone. I have to say, you sure know how to make an appeal to my vanity. You've certainly given me a lot to think about. All right, I'm in. I'll let you and Grayson work out my rate between the two of you. I know he'll be fair. Smart choice. I'll get the paperwork drawn up first thing tomorrow. Now that we're co-workers, let's talk business. I know Grayson plans to renovate the place, and it certainly could use some work. But the way I see it, we're sitting on a pretty sweet event space already. What do you mean? I mean, if you want to go to the hottest parties in Northbridge, you don't go to clubs. You go to the abandoned buildings, warehouses, condemned parking structures. The real nightlife is totally underground, totally exclusive. But I'm sure a guy like you doesn't need me to tell you that, right? Um, actually, I don't get out much. Really? I guess that explains why we've never met. I'd remember somebody like you. Oh, uh, uh, thanks. So, what would you say if I invited a bunch of the city's hottest influencers here for a secret party here tonight? Just imagine, we can build this club's rep before it even opens. Not a bad idea, huh? A secret party. I love it. Wonderful! I'll set up the event and send all the invites. Feel free to let your friends know. And, if they're anything like you, I'm sure they'll fit right in. I feel like Kenji, personal note, I feel like Kenji is more um, Asian, Asian descent, especially with the last name, Katsoros. Um, especially the first name. I'm gonna go with the voice, I'm gonna keep it going, but I, I would have done something different now that I think about it. Later that evening, 
Poppy and Dax arrive at the Grand to find the sidewalk packed with people waiting to get in. Holy crap! How many people did Kinji invite will be waiting out here forever? Is this even legal? Like, there's no way he got a liquor license already. Just then Kinji appears at your side, a dazzling smile on his face. Hey man, there's nothing to worry about. I pulled some strings and got a special permit for tonight. Drinks are on me. You mean these people are all drinking for free? Once they get inside, sure. But if they're not on the guest list, they have to pay to get in. Uh, is it cash only? You don't seriously think I charge Alex's friends for entry, do you? You guys are VIPs! Hell yeah, I don't think I've ever been a VIP before. Me either. I'm starting to like this guy, Alex. Yeah, he's not bad, I guess. Eh, <laughs> I'll take it. Come on in! Let's get you three some drinks. What am I supposed to hit on him? Stop forcing this, Joyce. Damn! You follow Kenji inside to find the grand packed with fashionably dressed club goers while a heavily tattooed DJ blasts music from the stage. Wow, Kenji, I have to say, I'm impressed. This is a great crowd. Thanks, Alex! It's nice to get a little appreciation now and then. Why don't you three head over to the bar? My buddy will set you up while I get back to my rounds. A club manager's work is never done. Glad to see you're taking this so seriously. Well, I figured if I... better if I won impress you. As Kenji disappears into the crowd, you, Poppy, Dax, walk over to the bar. You're Kenji's friend, right? Actually, I'm his boss. Ha! <laughs> I like that. What are you drinking, boss? I'll have a gin and tonic, gin and tonic, a lemon drop, an Italian soda. Eh, gin and tonic, why not? Great choice! Now, I just have one more question for you, Alex. What's that? Who's your friend? Bartender flashes Poppy a charming smile, and she immediately flushes. Oh, me? I'm Poppy. Poppy, I like it! I'm Skylar. He noticed Dax looking miserable and turned back to the bar. Here up, Skyler. Stay out of it. So, Poppy, what can I get you? I mean, he is the bartender, after all. I'll have a dark and stormy, please. Coming right up! Skyler prepares your drinks and pushes them across the counter. Poppy comes with a napkin with a scribbled phone number on it. Give me a call sometime? Oh, uh... Sure, okay. Skylar flashes her another smile, then notices Dax for the first time. Hey, man! Did you want anything? Yeah. Whiskey? Neat? You got it, Chief! The three of you make your way through the crowd, holding your drinks carefully. Is it just me, or was that guy kind of a jerk? And... What the hell kind of name is Skyla, anyway? I think it's a perfectly fine name, and yeah, he was a little forward, but sometimes that's refreshing. That... What's that supposed to... As Dax turns to stare at Poppy, he bumps into a young woman in a leather jacket, knocking her drink out of her hand. Hey! Oops, I, I'm, I'm sorry! Three of you watch, open mouth as a falling drinks slows to near standstill, and the young woman snatches it out of the air without spilling a drop. Well, clearly she has telekinesis powers. Let's all stare at her. Yeah, that's that's the way to... just... not awkwardly. Just anyway. She takes a sip and smiles enigmatically. No harm done. Before you can say anything, the mystery girl slips between two couples on the dance floor and vanishes into the crowd. Okay, what the hell just happened? Either we all just suffered from the same mass hallucination, or we've got another superhuman on our hands. You should follow her and try to find out more about her, Alex, before she gets away. Hold my drink! I'll catch up with her. Hold my beer! Hold my beer now! Come on now! But she's gone. Let's just keep an eye on. Well, 
it would help to learn more about her, but something tells me we'll see her again. Let's just hope there aren't any more superhumans running around the city. Just then, you feel a tap on your shoulder and turn around to find Kenji standing beside you. Done making your rounds? Pretty much! I was hoping we could spend a little time together. Or, do you prefer to keep a little more distance between yourself and your subordinates? Um... I like the tone of music, too, with this. Maybe another time. No worries! You know where to find me if you change your... Just then, a party guest pushes past you to join the growing crowd at the doors. What's going on out there? Let's find out. Something tells me Fireboy's here. You and Kenji push through the throng to find the cause of the commotion. Oh my god. The DMV across the street burns brightly, consumed by huge flames. Thick black smoke billows towards the sky. As Kenji stares open mouth, Dak suddenly pulls you aside out of Kenji's earshot. Alex, Poppy, I think this could be the work of that man on fire from the news report earlier. And if it is, he could still be around. Do you have your suit? You... You mean my mask? <laughs> we don't have a suit. Of course, but I'll need to make up something to tell Kenji... Wait, where is Kenji? Who cares? Alex, we gotta stop this guy before he does any more damage. Quickly, you duck into an alleyway to change and emerge wearing your suit. <laughs> I can't take it. It looks like shit. It's kind of like my type of vigilante. I'm just cheap as shit. I'm just wearing a mask. Don't mind the outfit. Time to find whoever started the fire. Your question is answered immediately when a man strides out of the flames, his entire body ablaze. Looking for me, hero? You open your mouth to reply when somebody rudely pushes past you. Uh, excuse me? Your days are terrorizing. This city are over, hothead. I'm putting you out. For good. Huh. Upstage. You completed Chapter 5. Well, I hope you all did enjoy that. Feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I'll keep it short and sweet at the end here. <sighs> let me know if you did enjoy it. Um, otherwise, feel free to like and share. Also, feel free to head down in the description where you can find me on social media or if you want to support my content at all. There's some links down there. Otherwise, feel free to tag back to the recap this week and also stay tuned to the new... Um, chapters. The re recap this week had some um, a bit of information in the end of it, so uh, feel free to check that out. Until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.